I'd like to personally invite you to join me in San Francisco in September for Converge 22, Circle's first annual crypto ecosystem conference. We're bringing together thousands of people, panelists and speakers, policymakers, economists, startup builders, blockchain platforms, DeFi protocols, and more. Convene and converge with us in San Francisco. As viewers and listeners of The Money Movement, we are offering you a special discount by using the code MONEYMOVEMENT when you register at converge.circle.com. Hello and welcome to The Money Movement. I'm joined here today by Byron Gilliam, who is a market strategist and newsletter writer uh, for Blockworks. And um, I find uh, one of the most prolific newsletter writers out there. Um, Byron, uh, welcome welcome to the show. Super excited to have you on here. Um, and uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Thanks. That's amazing to be on. I'm a, uh, I, I subscribe. I listen to all your podcasts. So it's, uh, it's amazing to be on. Well, you didn't, you didn't play the intro music for me, so I'm not totally convinced that it's real. That's in post-production. That's, in that's totally, to totally in post-production. Um, <laughs> um, you know, it's, 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 uh, it, it's great because there's so many ideas that fly around in, 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 in the kind of crypto land and, um, uh, I, I likewise like there there are, there are writers and there are podcasters and others and there's just such a plethora of information and as I like to say like I've been in this for nine years I'm pretty far down the rabbit hole but I actually feel like I only understand like one percent of it um, and so which is I think a good sign uh, not, not, hopefully not a reflection of me but more a reflection of just how much of a surface area there is in in, in all this and. Um, you know, on that note, actually, you know, uh, to, again, just kind of a little bit more of, of an introduction uh, for you um, and for, for the audience. If you don't subscribe to uh, Byron's uh, newsletter on Blockworks, highly recommend it. Uh, a lot of people refer to it as the Matt Levine of crypto or you as the Matt Levine of crypto. Although these days, Matt Levine is sort of writing a lot of crypto, too. So I don't know kind of where that stands. Yeah, Matt, but Matt, Le Matt Levine is definitely the Matt Levine of crypto. And the only person who calls me the Matt Levine, Levine of crypto is myself, just to be clear. I've seen that, but I, I, I think there's credence in that. Uh, uh, so um, anyway. R really have enjoyed uh, your writing and your journey uh, into this space. And, and maybe that's a great place to start. I'd, I'd love to maybe have you share um, a, a little bit of your, your journey into crypto land. And, um, you know, obviously in, in the newsletter, you, you touch a lot on, you know, lots of episodes from your past uh, and, and relate those to, to the here and now to just provide the kind of trad five to DeFi context or whatever you want to call it. But, but just uh, maybe t take a couple of minutes and talk about kind of how you got here. Sure. Um, yeah. Well, I was a, an equities trader uh, for about 25 years. Um, most of that was with a couple of large investment banks. Um, being an equities trader, an investment bank is like making prices to hedge funds and, and taking some prop positions and executing some orders. Um, that doesn't really make me a banker, uh, even though I worked for an investment bank. It just makes me a trader. Uh, but crypto people don't know that. Um, my crypto native colleagues just assume that I know everything about TradFi because I worked in TradFi, and I've not so far disabused them of that notion. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so yeah, so I was a trader for a long time. I kind of was aging out of being a trader, and also trading is not as fun as it used to be you know when i when i started it was uh you know you just had to be faster than the next guy and then by the end of it you had to be faster than some computer which is impossible um so equities trading was less fun than it used to be and i was getting too old for it so i was poking around for looking looking for something new to do uh, and i got connected with blockworks who was looking for somebody to uh, write their newsletter and specifically they were looking for somebody who they thought could translate crypto for uh, traditional finance um, people. And they thought maybe I could do that. Um, and I knew a little bit about crypto, like I knew Bitcoin, I knew ETH. Uh, I'd gone down the Bitcoin rabbit hole in about 2015-ish, so I was, I was semi early to it. Um, I unfortunately decided that it was not a good risk reward. Um, although I did buy one, I bought one Bitcoin at like $2,000. And then I sold it like a year later, I bought it 
just because I thought, well, you know, there's a hard cap, 21 million. And then it forked off into Bitcoin Cash. I thought, okay, well, now there's 42 million of them. So I, that kind of ruined that thesis for me. And then I did the same thing, same exact thing with Ethereum. I, I, I bought some ETH. I, I can't remember how many. And then like six six months later, the Crypto Kitties thing happened. And it just like completely halted the Ethereum blockchain. I thought, well, if this thing can't even process pictures of cats, then what good is it? So I sold those also, unfortunately. I think that was even an even bigger mistake than, than selling ETH. Um, but that was that was the extent of my my crypto uh, experience prior to, to Blockworks. Although I was I was interested in it, um, uh, and yeah, so I've just been I've just been going down the the rabbit hole ever since. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Well, I, you know, I think um, as uh, as as you write often, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of entertainment um, in in, uh, in in all of this, but there 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 are a lot of really interesting and, and, and sort of choice nuggets. Um, maybe we can pull on, pull on a few areas, you know, as, as, um, as you got to spend more time and, and, and looking at, at things, um, I find in your commentary often, you know, you, you're kind of like trying to reason about things and, and relate them. Um, you know, I, I, I'm curious, just stepping back, uh, having been at it for now, I don't know how long, uh, is it just, a it's almost exactly a year. Yeah. It feels like about a year. Right. Um, you know, from from where you were then until where you are now, what what are what are some of the biggest things that that you've taken away, or things that basically you feel like you you have stronger belief and conviction about than maybe you did uh, when you started writing? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting way to to frame it. I'm not sure that I have stronger conviction. I probably have less conviction. I think you know they, they you know there's that meme with the uh, you know the mid the midwit meme on on uh, on Twitter, and I'm, I'm you know I think I'm on I think I'm right at the top of that bell curve. I'm I'm like securely in in midwit territory now. Um, uh, yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's crypto is a lot different than I was expecting it to be. Uh, you know, I was kind of I was came into it uh, thinking that all of these uh, new protocols and stuff were basically tech companies, you know, it's software. So I figured they were, they were like software companies um, and that, you know, tokens are stocks and protocols are companies, but they are not at all. You know, I, I learned pretty quickly that, you know, there's the, the protocols are not companies, tokens are not stocks. Um, but then everybody just talks about them that way you know everyone everyone you know people will say if i say that to people like to crypto people they're like yeah they're not but then they just proceed to talk about them as if you know they have p ratios and uh and as, as if they're you know investments that are going to just naturally appreciate over time like an equity would do and and that's just not what they are uh and actually recently i've been surprised that um it's actually become more like that when i started uh you know when when i started a year ago, uh, you know, Uniswap was the, you know, the airdrop was relatively recent, and you know, Uniswap was very, very careful on with their airdrop to uh, to make clear to everybody that they were not a security. They were not going to earn revenues, and they were not going to pay them out to token holders. It was very clear that a you know, lawyer had had uh, written the copy on their website. Um, Sushi was taking revenues, but even Sushi Swap, they were. Uh, really careful to say that we are paying them out to stakers. We're not paying revenues to uh, token holders because that would be like paying a dividend. You know, we're paying uh, we're paying out, out our revenues as a fee to token holders, uh, as a fee to stakers for the service of staking. Even though staking was not any kind of a service. Um, so you know, there were people were trying to comply, and even if you go further, you know, way back, if you go back to the DAO, I'm, I'm reading Cryptopians at the moment, which is great. Yeah. You, know, you know, the the DAO was super careful to structure in a way that that would uh, you know avoid uh, uh, being labeled a security, even though it didn't help. SEC still said they were security, um, but at any rate, now a year later, uh, it seems like crypto has completely given up on that. You know, the the trend now is everyone is talking about you know all the protocols are talking about the revenue they're going to generate and how they're going to return it to token holders and how the token right. tokenomics are going to make the price right. of the token go up uh, right. which is in, in a, in a world where where uh where yield kind of uh you know subsidized uh you know uh <laughs> yield incentives with tokens uh and quote-unquote yield farming and what was DeFi 2.0 and so on like where that that's kind of no pun intended run out of gas 
Um, <laughs> uh, you, you know, yeah, I, I agree with you. Like there's sort of been this, this pivot to, uh, to like looking at the quote unquote, the real economics, uh, of, of real utility, real economics, which it, in some respects, that's good, right? You want, you want, oh. you, 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 that's, that's really what you want. I mean, I, I don't think I certainly, uh, was somewhat confounded by the, uh, the amount of, you know, food products, <laughs> you know, whatever you want to call it. Everyone talked about all the, all the, you know, the, the kind of phenomenon of, of farming and, and, you know, the kind of Ponzinomics and, and it, it just, it was kind of maddening, um, when, when you really looked at it, but it was, it was such a, such a big phenomenon, but getting kind of back to basics in a sense, but in so doing, I mean, coming back to, to what you were just saying, like, if you get back to basics and say, you know, here's a protocol, here's its function, here's its utility, here's its economics, et cetera. You know, how does one think about, um, you know, uh, disclosure, market conduct, you know, risks of fraud, uh, you know, all, all the all the things that say a a securities regulator um, m- might care about. And, you know, I just came from D.C. Uh, for the past several days and uh, you know, meeting with a lot of a lot of different a lot of different people. And, um, you know, I, I think the big the big discussion is, you know, is this sufficiently different that it needs a different set of, of of rules or should you just try and say you know it's a security and therefore it has to be subject to uh you know registration statements and sec uh form xyz review and it only can be custodied by this kind of person and this kind of firm and you need to have a transfer agent and it needs to go through a dealer and the dealers can only do this and you have to have these registered exchanges that are national ex- i mean the, the the superstructure the market structure and superstructure that exists there like, does it even make sense to try and attempt to map that to what these protocols are? I'd be interested in your take on that. If you if you tried to reason about that uh, at any level, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the the Howey test stems from case law that is from 1946, I think, and uh, you know, was about orange groves and whether orange groves are or you know the management of orange groves were securities. So it's just. You know, it's very dated and it's very not applicable to to crypto. And um, you know, a decentralized exchange is very different than a centralized exchange. It doesn't seem like those two things should be regulated with the same rules. Um, I do think that cryptos um, should have a different set of rules. Um, but on the other hand. Crypt, like we're like I was saying, cryptos are acting so much like equities that maybe they shouldn't. So you know, I definitely, I definitely do not blame the yeah. SEC for thinking that basically everything is a security because basically everything is acting like a security. Yeah, I, I, uh, I had uh, a chance to to um, guest lecture with uh, Gary Gensler when he was uh, teaching at M- MIT and do, doing a class there, and uh, and while he was there. I also had a chance to have him come and, and do a company all hands at Circle and um, and do a fireside chat on some of these topics, uh, not knowing, of course, that he was going to become the uh, chair Gensler. Um, but um, you know, one one of the discussions that we actually had back then, and 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 I actually I have some blog posts about it, which I'll try and dig up um, and share in the show notes. But you know, was you know my own belief just ba- this was back in. 2018. Okay, so this is a while ago. How long ago is that? That's four years ago. Okay, um, and um, you know th- there was sort of this phenomenon where you you could have a token that um, simultaneously had features that would really make it seem like a security, features that would make it seem like a commodity. And features that would make it seem like a currency, um, and it could be all three. It's kind of like the Heisenberg principle. I don't know if that's the right the right thing. It sort of depends on how you look at it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But but and 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 clearly, there's this kind of um, you know context for a token, and um, and then there's a kind of um, an evolution over time and context and both. And, and, and what I was sort of arguing then 
which I still feel pretty strongly about today is like, this is like a new reality. Like we can't put the genie back in the bottle. Like this is, this is a new, this is actually an innovation. This is not some, just some way to like skirt around laws. It's like, this is a, a new innovation. And, and as you may know, my background is as a internet technologist, as an internet software technologist. And I've been, you know, digging around internet protocols since 1990. And, and I look at these things, you know, I look at protocols and I look at, you know, that, that world. And a lot of this is open specifications, open source software protocols, but there's, um, but there's, there's economic mechanisms tied to them and there's governance around them. And so it is this, 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 um, this kind of new, new form. And so I guess the question, what I've sort of said is what you really need is you need some new definitions. Um, like the law needs new definitions. Like this is a moment in time when, you know, uh, you know, it's like, uh, autonomous cars didn't exist. You need some new definitions. There's now a thing. It's an autonomous car. You can't, you know, give it a driver's license, right? Uh, you know, whatever the, the, the kind of concept is. So I, I really feel like there's, there's gotta be new definitions. And, um, and, and then, and then one can sort of have a discussion about, well, as a TradFi investor, what might be important to me, whether I'm Joe retail or, or Jane institutional, like what might be important to me um, and, and that, you know, what would go on a tokens registration statement and what would its ongoing disclosures need to be? And if there's an assurance industry around it, what's the assurance industry that's necessary for it? Um, so th those have been some of the thoughts. And I feel like in your writing, you've kind of picked apart some of those issues, uh, in, in, in a lot of, with a lot of different examples. I don't know if there's, um, any thoughts that might kind of come from, from that line of reasoning. Yeah, no, I think I think that your last point, I think, um, is an underappreciated one. I, uh, you know, everybody asks, like, is this token a security? But I, I sort of think that's not actually the right question to ask. Uh, the, the issue is really that everyone is treating them as securities. Uh, you know, people, there's an expectation uh, that there is that they are going to buy them as an investment and, and make a profit. And that and the SEC's remit is to protect investors and people think that they are investing in crypto. So therefore, the SEC should protect them. I, mean, I think you could also make an argument that these are not securities in the sense that if you buy one, you do not have a claim on any assets. You do not have a claim on, on future cash flows. You might have a vote, but if you do have a vote, it's very likely non-binding, right? It's the, the votes in crypto are kind of like um, signaling to the multi-sig. Yeah, they're like, uh, like yeah. Yeah, they're like, this is, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Like, this is what I would like you to do, but you don't have to. You know, there's... Um, uh, so I like there's a lot of reasons wh why these are not securities, um, but I think because we all treat them like they are, well, you know, we treat them as if they were equities investments. So therefore, the SEC is also going to treat them like they're equity investments. Yeah, but if you if you can imagine, um, and there are governments doing this, right? Who who are sort of saying, well, you know, if you want to uh, if you want to sell a token for a protocol like in our country. You know, you gotta you gotta have like uh, uh, the equivalent of like a token registration statement. You got to talk about the project and the founders, and is there a security audit on the code? And you know, you know, all, various various things. One can imagine some form of 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 uh, of kind of registration and disclosure that would be relevant to people, right? That that um, that that that's there, um, and uh, and for for. Jane or John Q. Public to kind of be able to read these and know that you know someone's job is to kind of check these, um, you know. Um, yeah, I kind of wonder that it's unreasonable, right? Yeah, I, I guess I have a, a couple of issues with that. Like one, the one is that um, you know these things are non-geographic. So if you're Uniswap, are you going to register as a security and? every country in the world right yeah because um, yeah. you can't let you know in the u.s right. you can only buy apple with a u.s broker right or you know if you have a yeah. u.s Medicare or something so um um that's the one thing and what was the other what was the other thing um i've forgotten my other point i had another yeah. really really good point but i forgot what it was and that's that's great i love that point um <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's it, it's it's fascinating, and I think one of the things that draws a lot of people to um, this space is the inherent kind of internet scale of it all, right? Like by definition, it, 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 as as software on the internet, it kind of exists everywhere the internet exists, and that's what you know. Th there there hasn't been a, a set of uh, economic primitives that sort of exist everywhere the internet exists. <laughs> like now there are, um, and so that that is super um super powerful um and i think you know there there is ironically even though there's so much of a, a kind of decentralization uh you know is such a core philosophy uh of crypto and um and so on it, it's also highly highly globalistic in a sense uh even though it's this very decentralized thing i think there is almost like um uh uh you know uh it's like the solidarity movement. I don't know what you call it, but like th th there's something highly globalistic about it. And, and everyone feels like, hey, we're building something that is truly, you know, planet, you know, for the planet. It's sort of, you know, why why do we have to have, you know, all these national boundaries and national laws? <laughs> like this just works. And this is a, is a, is a way to make things work. I'm, I'm interested at a deeper level to kind of hear your thoughts on, um, you know, is it is it is it viable to kind of do some like bottom up building of economic structures you know because that's what some of these things are a dao uh a protocol uh you know and and um and and what are the implications of that economic structures in in what sense well organizational economic structures governance structures uh right right, right. coordination uh, of working capital uh you know yeah, I, I am totally confident that, that there is, but I don't know what those are going to look like as of yet. Like, I think there there is some neat experimentation going on in the DAO uh, governance world, um, but that's sort of kind of a niche activity. I feel like mostly DAOs so far have just been used as a regulatory arbitrage um, and to have kind of hidden hidden hierarchies and hi hidden power structures um but, but there's a phrase uh the tyranny of of uh structurelessness so right. I mean, you have when you have when you have absolutely no structure there is going to be a power hierarchy there it's just going to be invisible to the normal observer which in right. a lot of ways is is worse than having a a right. formal structure right um and that was like that was i think at the moment the way they're generally being used they're they're it's got uh, it's kind of like you know holy roman emperors were neither holy nor nor roman DAOs are neither decentralized uh nor autonomous and they're not even very organized um <laughs> so yeah i think i think there's uh i think there's going to be a lot of fascinating things that that happen in DAOs. um but if we just try to make them uh a new version of LLCs, then I think we're not going to to get very where get very far. I think they need to be uh, new and totally different things. Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying, and um, you know, I, they, there there have been a lot of lessons over uh, the centuries about uh, how to create a corporation, uh, whether nonprofit or for profit, and how to have governance and bylaws and uh you know checks and balances and um and uh you know the, 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 there's there's a lot of uh there's a huge body of work that that exists there and there's a huge body of work in in terms of you know delegation and um and decision making and and all this um you know and, and and so you know at many levels like yeah the the kind of the flat dow with uh, a whole bunch of token holders uh and then uh, a treasury uh that that's hanging out uh you know in a gnosis safe or, or whatever like it, it feels kind of radical and empowering at one level right like oh my god like we can do this we can just like have a bunch of people connected with our wallets and we're like we're making decisions and we're moving funds and we're like stuff's getting done and there's 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 worker bees and there's you know th like there's like a there's this thing and you know and no one signed any contracts <laughs> which is uh you know i think also part of the exhilaration and um it'd be interesting to to uh to 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 sort of see what the um 
I don't know if it's a standard deviation uh, or a bell curve or what, but it'd be interesting to look at at, at um, kind of demographics overlaid on DAOs. Um, and uh, I, like, I know a lot of really young people who are like, I'm in seven DAOs. I'm like, wow, and I'm earning and I'm making a living. I'm like, why would I ever go work for a company? Because I'm like, I have, I have all these DAO tokens and I'm doing this and they may not be doing that right now because the 99% drawdown or whatever it was, but like, there's a way in which uh, that, that that quote unquote economic freedom, uh, which is a mantra for, for a lot of a lot of people in crypto, like that's a real thing. Um, but I, I think um, many of your observations about what it what it is in practice uh, are, are 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 really accurate. Um, I think um, I'd be interested in you know whether you whether you believe that you know can can there be really you know significant iteration on that. And can one imagine like more sophisticated forms of uh, on-chain governance and on-chain, you know, treasury management and um, and 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 putting more of that substance in to to do things? Yeah, I uh, I am confident that there will be, but I I, I don't know what it's going to look like. Um, you know, at the moment, I feel like. The real use case for a DAO right now is when you have a protocol that is, you know, finished software and it runs on its own. And uh, the if you want to change it, you can write some code and let everybody in the DAO vote on it. And if it's voted in, then the code is automatically implemented. Right? That that is like the very base case uh, use for a DAO, and that that makes sense to me. Um, but in terms of like trying to build a business, like uh, like a lot of protocols say that they are trying to do, I I don't see how that's going to work with the DAO. I just you know there's a fine line between freedom and chaos, and I think I think it seems to me like from the outside, I've never worked in a DAO, uh, but from the outside looking in, it seems like uh, DAOs are very much on the the chaos side of that line. It's, you know, just I, I read a lot about uh, you know all the stuff happening with Maker, mm -hmm. and I just I just can't understand like how that how that's supposed to function. Um, you know, they don't, they don't even have a budget process, right? Like anybody can, mm -hmm. you know, anybody can propose an expenditure at any time. So it's just like a constant rolling budget process, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And I imagine I would, I would think that it would be incredibly frustrating to work there. Um, I, I can't really imagine what that would be like. Uh, and especially for something like Maker, where you're trying to, uh, you know, have one foot in 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 the real world with with real world assets uh and you are having to deal with uh contracts and lawyers and things like that it just seems like a DAO is a is just not fit for purpose yeah it's def definitely a, a a layer of 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 complexity of a significant layer of complexity um but well, it's interesting i i i'm um I, i'm I'm uh, I'm I'm very interested in in how one might be able to build more durable institutional structures around on chain, you know, on chain execution and on on, on chain kind of models. Um, you know, I think there's uh, you know various ideas that get tossed around around uh, you know implementing common law concepts in smart contracts and uh, uh, you know uh, you know building uh you know tiered tiered token models that more resemble classes of of, of voting and preferred stock and you know all, all these kinds of things coming back to the are these are these securities uh discussion but but nonetheless like using this to kind of mirror maybe the wrong word because i don't think the goal is to literally mirror uh exactly what a delaware corporation is or or what have you but um but at least be able to kind of bridge to uh you know that that world um anyway it's an interesting it's definitely in a really interesting area um I, I guess um um i'm i'm also i'm i'm just sort of interested you know as you look at the the market side of this and the the markets uh side of this um uh you, you know behaviorally uh, um there's a lot of interesting behavior in this market um do you feel like this is kind of the same behavior that you see in the equity markets or is there is there something is there some other i hate to use the word alpha but but is there some other 
uh, you know, essence to this market and how it behaves given it's, it's like, it's got this global retail participation. It's got memes. It, it has, uh, there's just a lot of other kind of things in it that you don't kind of get if you're say trading the, you know, NASDAQ or Russell 2000 or whatever you're trading. Um, yeah, it's definitely different. Um, it's, and it's more different than I expected it to be. Um, like I said, in the beginning, I kind of came into it thinking that these things were going to be like higher beta tech stocks, um, because they were software. So it kind of seems logical. Um, but that's that that's not how they act at all. Uh, they're less trending than than equities, which kind of surprised me. They're more more mean reverting and less trending, which in hindsight makes sense because, uh, you know, they're constantly issuing tokens for one thing. Um, um, but they just do. Yeah, they, they act differently than than equities. I'm consistently surprised at how expensive cryptos are. You know, expensive is subjective in in the crypto world, but you're talking about like totally to fully diluted market cap type of measures yeah, of some of yeah. these things. Yeah, um, I kind of came into it like thinking like, wow, there's this whole universe of things that nobody's paying attention to, so surely they're going to be really cheap, uh, but they're not at all. Um, uh, yeah, which is still confusing to me because the the pool of buyers of any given crypto to me seems very small. Like how many people actually know how to use MetaMask or whatever? It's, it's not that many. Right. Um, but some, and, and, and the other side of the, the coin is this unlimited supply. You know, every protocol is constantly issuing new coins and somehow finding buyers for them. Um, which is just surprising to me. Uh, especially after the the crypto winter, like the way the way market caps have held up in the crypto winter has really yeah. surprised me. Right, um, and you get something like you get something like Bitcoin, uh, um, ETH Classic still has like a four or five billion dollar market cap, and it doesn't really yeah. do anything. So that's right. confusing so, to me. Like, it, like it, it's confusing that? to me too. Like it, it, it really is, and I, I've 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 come to accept it. <laughs> Uh, in, in some ways, but like it's it's really confusing, and 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 um, like one has to wonder like will the music stop? <laughs> like w w will the music stop? And I guess like right. the music could stop in a you know in in a potentially say a, a, a deep recession where everyone's trying to like scrape every penny out of their pocketbook, right? So like th that that is one way that the music could stop right which is just a the level of risk off is literally like i gotta i gotta i gotta get every i gotta liquidate every freaking token i have to the last drop right that that could be one way <laughs> um but 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 the the kind of like sustained belief uh which in in a sense right for many of these is kind of meme based uh because it, it's not usage based uh necess you know it's just it's just it's sort of like the usage is the the willingness to trade in in many cases um does the music stop yeah i think probably the best analogy to uh to tradfi is you know gamestop and and amc and uh you know i was totally shocked that that gamestop kept that market cap, you know, most of the market cap that it got in those, the, the wild, um, ride up, uh, like I kind of understood the, the, you know, that it could just, you know, go crazy. Anything can go crazy on the upside for a little while, but I was totally shocked at how, you know, how much of that move it retained. Mm -hmm. Um, same, same with AMC. And I guess maybe that's what's happening in, in crypto also. Maybe there's just, you know, some mean value that's, that's not to be, uh, underestimated. Yeah, uh, it, it's uh, interesting to watch. So I'm, I'm curious, um, you know, is there anything in the space right now, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, an area where there's kind of projects or technology or or an area of the market that has kind of captured your attention, you're intrigued by that, that uh, you think we should all be paying closer attention to? Um, I don't I don't think of anything any any surprising things there um i personally am always interested in stable coins um because 
you know, I still think that payments are are the best use case for cryptos, even though, you know, that was in, I think, the very first sentence of Satoshi's yeah. white paper. And it hasn't been totally fully realized yet. Um, but I, I feel like we're getting close to that. Like maybe we're working with, on it. <laughs> <laughs> um like maybe with with L2s and maybe everyone's going to have a wallet where it costs a fraction of a cent to move your USDC around uh, yes. and that could be that could be a real game changer. I feel like, you know, when people are critical of crypto and they say like, you know, how did it, how is it worth 3 trillion dollars at the top? How is it worth a trillion dollars now? Like I feel like payments alone could justify a trillion dollar market cap, no yeah. problem. Um yeah. I also enjoy stable coins just because it you know raises lots of questions about you know what is the nature of money and what is the nature of banking um, totally. and i think it's getting really interesting now with uh with these app issued uh stable coins like you know yeah. obvious go and, and stuff like that um yeah. so i'm always interested in stable coins um i am uh, interested to see what uh, happens after the merge with uh, you know the eth staking yield whether that becomes some kind of risk-free rate for a crypto i don't yeah. think it's actually a risk-free rate but people might treat it like that and you know yeah. people might start building uh neat financial structures on, on top of that mm -hmm. um i'm uh, interested to see what happens with real world assets i don't really understand how we're going to get real world assets on on chain um to me it just feels like if uh you know if you put a house on a you can put a house on a the, you can put the deed of a house on a blockchain but you know to evict somebody you still have to call the police so the you know, the the blockchain is just kind of uh you know improved bookkeeping um, right I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that, uh, that, that, you know, real world assets will, will come, will, will become a bigger thing. Yes. Um, and I'm also just really interested to see if, uh, if protocols can start developing some kind of moat that looks like what you would get in traditional finance. Like, you know, uh, uni has, uh, uni swap has, has staved off sushi swap pretty well. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, Lido, it seems like might have a, some kind of moat in, in staking. Um, so I'm, I'm very interested to see how that, that develops as well. Those are great. Those are great observations. Um, well, uh, good, good stuff. I, uh, I appreciate, appreciate you having you on and, and having the conversation and, um, and, and, ho and likewise kind of hope, hope to have you back and keep doing what you're doing. Cause I think it's, uh, it's, 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 it's great for everyone. You, you're, oh, that's, uh, amazing. that's you're, amazing to hear. No, I think your, your insights are, are, are really, really strong. And, and I think, um, benefit the community a lot. So, you know, thanks for that too. And I the right back to you and you you guys do you guys do amazing work. I think uh, you know, uh Circle and, and USDC is uh is is you know realizing that original vision of of payments and it's it's really fun to see what you guys um come up with. Lots to do. Cool. Well thank thanks for coming on, Byron. All right, thanks, Jeremy. Bye.